Hey everybody. A couple of months ago, I was looking for a filter that I could use to fight light pollution, but that would still give me great color images. That wasn't as restrictive as a narrow band filter. So far, I've been using a dual band filter that blocked out everything other than hydrogen alpha and oxygen three frequencies. And that's been working really, really well. My UV IR cut filter does cut through some of the light pollution, which although it sounds counterintuitive, there is apparently quite a bit of UV and IR scattered light throughout the atmosphere. And uh, the UV IR cut filter helps to cut through some of that. But I was looking for something a little bit more. Now I've had my eye on the Anthea tri-band filter, and then I saw the Anthea quad. And so I got it. I was very excited with this filter. I tried it out. I tried it with my 6SE. Some of the images that I took that I composited into my WR134 image uh, were taken with this filter, and that is the filter I used on the stars. Uh, but the stars were a little bit bloated, and then when I tried the Antlia Quad on a wider field of view using a wide field uh, DSLR lens with my astrophotography camera, unfortunately what I found was that the image was very bloated. Now, I made another video about this where I uh, put together data from the Anthea Quad, the UV IR, and the dual band filter to produce a fairly nice image of the Milky Way. Uh, out of that image, I was only able to use the galaxy portion, so the, the Milky Way core, uh, part of the dust portions of it at least, from the quad. I couldn't use the stars, and it really wasn't enough to, to pick up on any of the deeper uh, hydrogen or oxygen reds that the dual band filter picked up on. So I did some research and as it turns out uh, the Antlia quad works very well if your astrophotography camera has a built-in UV IR cut filter and my ZWO ASI 294MC Pro does not. So I came on the idea that uh, what if I could put the UV IR cut filter over top of the Antlia filter. Now, for me, that's a bit of a challenge because I'm using a filter tray and there's no room in the filter tray to double up filters, nor is there a place to screw two filters together. So I had to come up uh, with another way to do this. And the solution that I went with was to get uh, a bit of foam for which I sacrificed one of my kids' pool noodles and to cut that foam down to a size that it would use, um, that, or that it would act as a bit of a bracket to hold a smaller one and a quarter inch filter within the, I believe it's the M42 size threads uh, or the uh, the ring size. Uh, that's just the, the outer flange of the ASI camera so that I could nest a small one and a quarter inch UV IR cut filter right up against the lens of the camera and then have that sitting behind and have that sitting behind the filter tray that would store the Antlia quad filter. So that's what I had going on behind me. Uh, this is the second time I'm making this video because the first time I set my camera to time-lapse instead of regular record. Uh, which is unfortunate because along the way I stuck my finger on the lens, things dropped, things didn't go very well. It was very funny. You should have seen it. Uh, anyway, so I'd like to go over what I found. And uh, here we've got the results from a couple of nights ago. Uh, I think they're a little surprising. So this here is uh, the, the image that I took with the Antlia filter alone. This represents 45 minutes, or just over 45 minutes, 17 frames at 3 minutes apiece at gain 240 using the ASI 294 MC Pro camera. Uh, and here we can, we can start to kind of make out the shape the outline of uh, triangulum. You know, one of the things that, that really um, uh, becomes apparent is that everything is, is kind of beige, reddish, 
and stars, although they're not quite as bloated as they were in the wide angle that I took uh, a little while ago, uh, where I was using the uh, wide angle lens, um, they're bloated. Right? The stars are, are a lot more bloated than they should be, uh, much more than what I would expect with a uh, narrow or a band filter. In fact, uh, just the UVI or cut filter does a better job. So we're, we're definitely seeing some bloating here as a result of the UV and IR light that uh, the Antlia filter is permitting through. By comparison, this is uh, the same image, so a triangulum, but now uh, 17 frames shot with both the Antlia filter and with the Svibani or Svibani uh, UV IR cut filter. So uh, what jumps out here is, first of all, the stars are much uh, crisper. You don't see that same bloating around the stars. There is much more definitioning and definition happening within the galaxy itself. We see a lot of red from the nebula. Not so, not so much the uh, blue tones. Now that could be as a result of sky conditions. Um, but when I imaged this uh, galaxy with just a UV IR cut filter, there was a lot more coloration happening here. So just a side-by-side -side comparison, if I zoom in the same amount on both of these and just put them side-by-side, -side, like right here in the core, there's, there's nothing in the core using just the... Uh, Antlia quad filter alone. Meanwhile, Antlia quad along with the UVIR cut filter, we see a lot more definition. And uh, then moving out here, um, we see some of that uh, nebulosity out here, and we see that same nebulosity in both images. But comparing the stars, this one's much tighter. Here, the stars are are bloated uh, quite a bit more. So. In terms of, of the crispness of the stars and in terms of how much detail I can see, at least from a galaxy perspective, doubling up the uh, Anthea quad filter along with uh, a UV IR cut filter uh, seems to work uh, to a degree. Now, uh, I've heard from at least one other person so far who's done something similar. They're using a different UV IR cut filter, but they are doubling them up with, uh, or doubling them up with the uh, Anthea quad, and they're saying that they're getting great results. So uh, obviously, this is something others are trying as well. And uh, so, if you have an Anthea quad filter and a camera that does not have a built-in UV IR cut filter, then uh, you can certainly try adding a cheap UV IR cut filter stacked with your Anthea. Uh, now, the last thing I did here is uh, I took the opportunity to add this data to an image I'd taken before. So last summer, I was at a star party at a dark sky site, and I took this image using just a UV IR cut filter. So this is triangul Triangulum from last year. Oh. And uh, this is the original Triangulum from last year, actually right here. And here I've rotated the image uh, using Cyril to match up against the image that I took uh, the other day with uh, the quad filter. So uh, I took the opportunity to take the data from the quad filter and overlay it over that uh, image from last year. And uh, I can definitely, uh, I do like this image quite a bit. Uh, a lot more of the red nebulosity uh, in Triangulum is showing through with the addition of the uh, Antlia quad data and uh, I think that that actually looks pretty good. So I'm going to post this to the end of this video and uh, hopefully uh, you found this helpful. Thanks for watching and clear skies.